Hi, I'm good, thank you. I just got the summer vacation, so oh, uh, I'm ready to really learn nice. some chess, not having to worry about work. Oh, that's really nice. How do you deal with the it heat? <laughs> with the heat? Well, it's uh, Denmark, so it's pretty cold, actually. It's like, really? I think it's like 17 degrees. It's not warm. It's just, it's okay. Huh, that's really nice. Yeah. I need some of that here because it's a, it's a huge, huge oven here. <laughs> yeah we're like it, it, 30 something yeah. degrees um, 30 something that's a lot i think like 20 something that's where you want to be right maybe 25 something like that no and a little bit of rain that would be great <laughs> yeah we actually had some rain a few last week since last week um it stopped from monday but we had uh, really hot days and then it was raining in the afternoon so that was really nice i actually enjoyed that but um now it's woof. <laughs> <laughs> really warm. But then you exactly. can like be outside and get a tan and, and stuff that like that. That would be nice, okay. but um, the beach is in Spain <laughs> and I'm stuck in uh, inside the city here. Maybe ah, okay. maybe one day, maybe one day we can we can go to the beach. Hold on, because I yeah. see I, I'm not sure. If we live I'm... really we live like two kilometers from the beach, so that's. Uh, Really? But we can't go there because it's too cold. Oh, we live, yeah. uh, well, um, we live usually in the summer, we live in Spain. Um, and that's where we also live, like, two meters away from the beach. So that's, that's really nice. But here, here is so mm. hot. Okay, I was yeah. just sending Johan a message to fix me. Uh, the stream on Twitch. I hope everything's fine and everybody can hear us. Hello to everybody watching and I guess we can look at some games, yes? Yes, that sounds good. Well, since uh, we looked at some of your games uh, last week and mm -hmm. um, you told me that uh, we could, uh, you could use some help with the plans in the, in the Accelerated Dragon. Yes. I've chosen two games for you today. They are very nice games, but um, I just wanted to show you some typical ideas. We're not going to be discussing too much theory or anything. It's just just to see some ideas how to yeah. how to play this. So let's see. Let's see the first game. And I see that it's played in Copenhagen. This game. Really, I didn't. Uh... It's played. I can. I can see when I turn down. It's played in Copenhagen. So this is where I'm ah, sitting. Nice. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure which year, but uh, a few, few years ago. I I can't see. I can't see anymore. The... I think it. Yeah, I can see that it says in 1997, but it has some question marks. So, well done. <laughs> no, I think that's uh, something from uploading it. But yeah, that's. Ah, that's okay. All but the, the ideas are really still very <laughs> good to use eh? yeah of course so okay here white plays nice c3 no it's just um yeah uh, another move order, but yeah. we get there knight takes and bishop g7 yeah i've had this position 100 times at least 100 times yes me too yeah, 100 <laughs> times, yeah. and knight b3 is uh, the line we were yeah looking at in your games and that posed some problems for you uh so here knight f6 he goes bishop b2 we saw some not very uh, few ideas last week but okay let's see and here he goes bishop b3 um i was telling you that bishop g5 is also an, op an, an option here but let's look at the bishop e3 first uh since i think this is the most uh, common at least I, in my games, bishop e3 has been the setup that I've uh, encountered most. Bishop e3. Yeah, I think f4. also when white puts the the other bishop on e2, mm -hmm. is I guess it's also to prevent knight g4. Yeah, but I think in this line, well, yeah, in this line the bishop goes mostly to e2 anyway. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you are right. Bishop knight g4 is a is usually a big threat, and if he wants to play with f4, then he needs to, why needs to have g4 under control? Yeah. Can't, uh, can't allow that. So here we said that we can 
go ahead and develop bishop to e6. Yeah, I remember. I remember that the uh, the bishop goes to e6 instead of. I usually put it on d7, and it's better placed on e6. Yeah, because because you wanted to go to c4 at some point. Maybe. That, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know it looks, it feels awkward at least because you see a four or five coming at you, but yeah. you see that's nothing. Uh, that's really not nothing to worry about. Uh, and this in this game, white actually goes f four. And look, rook c eight. We don't. We don't even look at. <laughs> don't even care. Don't even care. Yeah. So f five, and the idea is that you would love to play bishop c four, but you are not in time here because white hasn't played king h1 which is also one of the moves that they sometimes play to prepare all this and to just to get out of uh, the dark square diagonal um, avoid any checks so now we are not in time for bishop c4 but bishop d7 and remember that uh, whenever they go f5 the square e5 becomes very important mm. so what you want now is play around it knight e5 uh, knight c4 maybe those are uh, the typical ideas but one of the things i was most worried about when i started looking at these lines was well but what happens if white just starts throwing uh, their pawns at me what happens if g4 g5 g4 and... h4 yes. yeah so let's see what happens g4 is this the game yes this is the game okay okay good knight e5 it's like black doesn't even care. No, you see g5 coming, but no, <laughs> I don't care. Okay, and he goes g5. And what you have to know is that g5 is actually a blunder here. And really? since you are this tactical player, here is your moment to <laughs> brush up and show your skills. And for everybody watching us, please uh, think about a move for black here. How would you continue? How... And you say it's a, this is a blunder by right? Yeah, it's a big mistake, a g5. Okay. Something that... Uh, they shouldn't play. So for everybody just joining the, the stream now, uh, we are thinking about what to do here with the black pieces. Yeah, and I could really use some help. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm... You probably guessed that it's not about moving the knight, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, I think so, but it's uh, it's just then you have to make another third, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh. this is one of the most typical ideas in this accelerated. Well, I mean, I, I was looking at knight to c4, just uh -huh. because then I threatened to capture the the bishop and the queen, but but I just don't see what happens after. Like if I play the knight to c4 mm -hmm. to threaten here, but then he can just capture and then then I would have to take back and then my knight will uh, will be gone. Yeah, knight will be hanging on f6. You are right there. So no, knight, not knight c4. What, mm -hmm. other, what other active moves do you have? Hmm. Okay, maybe I could, uh, maybe this, I'm, I really haven't calculated anything yet. 
but, but it's fine. You just then I take a piece right away and I threaten, mm-hmm. and I threaten mm-hmm. this one. So that seems like it's more aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I take and then, oh, sorry, it's gonna, and he takes back. Oh, then I could take here with the knight. Mm-hmm. And then I think I have a lot of compensation because then my bishop is also attacking here and I think that that, that that looks like a decent move, I think. Yeah, rook c3 is, uh, is one of the typical ideas and not only in this um, line. In the Sicilian, rook takes c3 is one of the thematic sacrifices. In the, yeah. norm, the normal dragon as well, if, if white castle is long, you have this idea. Uh, and even here, because you actually get this pawn on e4 and uh, white structure is ruined. So it's not only that one that you're going to take. That's basically the point. Yeah. So rook takes c3, a uh, very strong move uh, with a decisive advantage right after. Let's see how how it continued. B takes c3 was the game, but let's see first what happens if pawn takes f6. This was the other option. Well, then I, I assume that you would uh, continue taking with the rook. And that's, uh, he takes on g7, and then you are you have some extra material here. Yeah. The rook yeah. is safe on e3. It might not look like it, but it's perfectly safe, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, and the, the queen can go to b6, maybe. Mm. Yeah, okay. e4 is hanging. Yeah. Not a very pleasant position. Um, I have to admit that I've never gotten to actually play this sacrifice. I like it so much. <laughs> I have seen so many <laughs> games. It's one of my favorites. Waiting. But, you know, <laughs> waiting. Yeah. Maybe you could please, Sophie. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will try to get this <laughs> for me. So, pawn takes c3 and now knight e4. Hmm? Yeah. And we attack everything. Very beautiful knights beautiful. On, uh, on the e file. It's a funny position with the two black knight and the two white bishop. Yeah, I agree. I agree, yes. Yeah. And you are actually threatening to take this one now and this one. Yeah. So yeah. in the game, he took on g6. And, well, h takes. Makes sense. And now he goes queen e1. There are other moves, but... Oh, uh, but then there are some tactics, right? There are some tactics and we will discuss them in a second. I don't know, something yeah. like bishop f3, I guess. You simply take on c3, right? There's nothing. There was a game like this actually with bishop f3. Yeah. This was another game. There are so many games like this. You'll yeah. be surprised. And knight f3, just a great position. Now you have uh, the bishop pair against uh, the open king on g1. So rook takes. And now he goes bishop g4. Yeah. And knight e2 is just uh, devastating. He wins the rook on a1. Yeah. And game over. And yeah. other moves like uh, perhaps c4 here? How would you continue? I think <laughs> just looks like there are so many good moves, but um I agree. I think you have many good moves here, yeah. Um I would no. I would still consider playing knight to c3 just to get the bishop pair again. Yeah. Uh, even if I don't win the pawn, I think it's still really a good position. And then, yeah, so playing something like knight here, something takes, and then maybe in the end just play something like bishop c6 and have some really, really good bishops. Bishop. Threatening to move the knight and then the rook on a1 is hanging. I, yeah. Yeah, there are tactics with that all the time. That's, yeah. Uh, knight c3 is one of the ideas. I think you can always play for that. And then there is this idea of just uh, improving your pieces and because knight c3 you will have it uh, anyway. I don't think uh, it's easy to stop that. There's also the idea of going queen c8. Because yeah. you are basically improving the queen, you're attacking c4, but you might also want to get to the king side. Something like uh, bishop h3 and queen g4 are there at some mm. point, depending on how the, the position, how the game continues. And same thing can be played against various moves, like uh, 
knight d4, you could take on c3, you could play queen c8 again. There, this is a very comfortable position, I think. Yeah. Lots of uh, possible moves to make here. Mm. So let's go back to the game and see how black won this, queen e1. How... Yeah, and then I'm thinking that you can just still take on c3, right? Yeah. We still take on c3. Uh, of course, if queen takes c3, let's show this variation also. If queen c3, we have knight f3, yeah. which is why... Picking up the queen. Mm -hmm. And that's why the tactics work here. So after knight c3, he goes bishop d4. And again, we take one of the bishops. Queen, ta yeah. queen takes. Queen takes. All right, what to do here? OK, many good moves, but <laughs> what would you play? <laughs> um, let me see. I might even consider playing, no, I was just thinking about playing e6 just to attack the oh, pawn on g5, uh, five, but maybe maybe white can, because it's not so easy for, for white to protect it, but maybe white could play something like h4 of it. Um, yeah, and you're kind of closing maybe it's the really bishop. Slow. You're closing the white, the light square bishop. Maybe that's uh, yeah. You can wait for that. I mean, you don't have to do anything. I'm not so afraid of white taking here because uh, the bishop pair would be so strong. So oh, and the two bishops will be like two swords, <laughs> cutting. Yeah, they're really. But I don't know. I mean, maybe this uh, bishop is better placed on on c6. Yeah, I think what you have to do here is start improving your pieces. Uh, you have yeah. such a good control over everything. Maybe putting the bishop here and the queen here. I'm not really sure where I want to put the black queen. Well, as we saw before, the queen can go to c8, and this is how he started the game. Yeah. Because it's really useful to have it on, on the light squares, on this diagonal. Uh, threaten to go to h3 maybe. Oh, if you want to play bishop c6, that's one. That was one of one of your ideas. I yeah. might need the queen somewhere to go and threaten mate. Uh, queen g4 has to be always taken uh, care mm. of. I simply improve your your pieces here. Is he goes rook f4 and no, bishop c6. Now he goes queen f1. Okay, let's take a moment here. How to continue with black. I think uh, these are the types of positions that I sometimes throw away because <laughs> yeah. like you have a good position and you're like, oh, I have so many options and then it happens, you know, if you're not yeah, the only you one. play a few not so precise moves and then it's just uh, the advantage is gone or just very small. Your um, opponent gets something, maybe some counterplay or improve the yeah. pieces. It happens, but I think, I think this one is. Yeah. Oh, here you actually have some tactics. That's why I stopped uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> to win the game. I know you You like those. There are some tactics, okay. Um... Uh, there might be something about no, yeah. <laughs> I think there's just so many texts and motives in this position, so they might not be working. Everything all is hanging. No? <laughs> I was like, looking at something some... like like mm. this. Yeah. Knight f three, um, which 
I mean, I guess white would have to capture it with the rook. Yeah, that's the most forcing that's, thing, and it should be yeah. first. And then I, th I was thinking about first taking the the bishop, which mm -hmm. is a check, and then after knight take, you can play queen g4, and then picking up the knight. Um, but I'm not sure if it's if it's then just. <laughs> like an exchange, if it's even very good. Um, uh, okay, let's I have think... a nice day. Have a nice day to us. Just <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thank you. City, you too. <laughs> Maybe you have an. Uh... Hello. Uh, I think I was losing you for a second. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can hear I, you. I, I couldn't hear you for uh, for a moment. So if you said uh, something more here, I, I kind of uh, <laughs> I didn't hear it. <laughs> I was thinking about your line. So knight f3, uh, rook f3, and you want to play rook g4, uh, queen g4 there. And I think everything. No, you want to take on d4. Yeah, I'm not really sure if it matters what I do first, but yeah, I would uh, either give the check on g4 first. Or, and yeah, yeah. In the end, you would pick up whatever piece is left on d4. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh... But it just looks like an exchange, maybe. Yeah. Like you're just changing off pieces. Well, actually, you get into a very nice, very comfortable position after that. Yeah. Knight f3. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see it. Rook takes, and you are looking at takes first. Yeah. Just that's the most forcing, I guess. I don't know, maybe it's the same. And King oh yeah, because I'm still attacking the oh the, the rook is hanging now. Yeah, we're just uh, we're taking on d4, and you're actually taking. Um, you're getting yeah, then the I'm rook gonna be. There are so many pawns. Yeah, I think you are winning the pawn on g5 as well. Yeah. If uh, if anything like. Maybe rook d1. That's what I was... No, it's not, I take with check, that's the good thing. <laughs> yeah, you always take with, take check, with check, but you could uh, you could hold on to it, like uh, move the queen somewhere. Yeah. Queen c3 and take the... Yeah, it's the not going anywhere. Mm. It's pinned. We can pick this one up, like this. Yeah. Oh yeah, even like that. You have so many pawns here and uh, you are headed to an end game. I think this is... Well, from a practical point of view, it's probably very easy to, to win since your opponent yeah. is kind of out of pieces. And I think queen g4, if we go back here, also works. Yeah. If you start this like is this. Just... Uh, because rook g3 doesn't work. Uh, we take on d4. Yeah. And then the rook on a1 will be hanging. There's only queen yeah, This is two. even worse. This is even worse, but uh, no, this is really, really, really nice. Uh, I take the rook on a1, but okay, rook g3, he can play something. Well, actually, king h1 here, I take on f3, it's even it's even better. Queen g2 maybe, but I still take nah, everything. I, he loses the rook on, uh, on yeah. f3, yes. So, queen g4 is probably the better move order, although the other one is also completely winning. In the game, yeah. why decided to allow this knight on f3 and he played king f2 okay but now we <laughs> remove this bishop and everything is kind of pinned here it's really and now black plays a very very strong move again he plays bishop d5 to improve this bishop but also because he wants to play e5 ah yeah he's threatening mm. The four, ah, okay, because if you played that now, yes. white could capture on c6, right? Right, yeah, he takes yeah. on takes on c6 then and, well, you are still much better, but, uh, you know, <laughs> you always want more. <laughs> 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 Just <laughs> no need to... Uh... So, bishop yeah, d5. Okay. Is it bishop g5? Bishop d5, very nice. No, also threatening um, if, like, the pawn on c2 is also getting weak. Yeah. You might want yeah. to take on d4 and take on c2. This is really, but it's. I like how they play with so much patience. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. 
you you know they're not like in a hurry to win this it's such a comfortable That's position i could play something i could use a little bit more <laughs> patience when I, <laughs> I agree i think all of us huh? <laughs> Yeah. So I don't know what uh, White can do here. He played Queen B5, but uh, it's it's just the uh, the Rook C3 was so good. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Takes now on... you can take on on C2. Yeah. You can take on C2. He played Queen F5 actually here, and I think that's uh, yeah okay. That wins the Rook after Queen F5. Well, okay. <laughs> you win <laughs> then the Rook that's on better D4. than a pawn. <laughs> yeah, you win the Rook on D4 here, right? What happens if yeah. king, G, king G1, for example? How do you win the rook there? King to G1... Uh, then I, I can take on G5 first. Mm -hmm. And then at some point I probably get like something like this, check. He can't go in the corner, so he will have to play... Uh, back somehow yeah on the the F5. yeah my idea is that at some point i can probably move my queen to either e3 or or f3 yeah just f3 right away and then picking f6 it up. yes you mean yeah yeah if, yeah sorry f6 of course yeah so if king g1 uh, we take here yeah and queen f6 game over yeah and if king e1 in this position, that's uh, even clearer, yeah? <laughs> yeah, okay, just e5, yeah. <laughs> queen e5, uh, yeah, okay. and game over. Yeah, yeah, very nice game. So this rook takes c3 is a typical idea in all the Sicilians. Yeah. Really, really, really strong. I haven't been, um, I, I, I'm, I, I have been told that before, I just haven't paid too much attention, attention to it. So well, I, now I you to see what kind, of, uh, what, what kind of positions you yeah. can get out of this, and uh, yeah. I think it's going to be uh, the thing to look for most. Usually it works when you can get the pawn on e4, like it happened, if we just go back for a second to the moment it happened. So here after g5, uh, the tactics worked really well because we were attacking this bishop on e3 after rook c3. Uh, mm. But also because the pawn on e4 will be hanging. This is usually what makes it work. Uh, when you get another pawn and you ruin your opponent's structure, that's that's how you know it. It's really yeah. So you need to get more than just the knight. <laughs> you need to yeah, also yeah, maybe yeah. get a pawn maybe or get, and a central yeah. pawn on e4. No, that's a central pawn. Yeah, really exactly. There are a few few games where uh, you don't get any pawns, but okay, not. Uh, we are talking about different lines. In our line, usually yeah. rook c3 and knight e4 is the typical thing. Yeah. So I started with the tactics. So you see that there are some tactics in this line as well. I was telling you it was a positional line, but uh, we do have some tactical ideas. Uh, and now let's see the positional part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, just one moment. I just need to find a charger for my Sure, no worries. Computer. I think it's I'll right here. here. Okay. This was played in Las Vegas. Okay, you are back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> back. So we are dreaming of Las Vegas now. Yeah. Um, exactly. So let's go. <laughs> let's go with the yeah. opening. This one is. Okay, he plays it a little bit different move order. But... Yeah, he plays... Uh, he, he's like not really not going for the accelerated. Uh, no, he's, he's going to play g6 and he's okay, getting okay. into the dragon. But it's not really okay. the accelerated because, well, uh, you keep the pawn on, on d6. And the accelerated, yeah. what you want to do is play d5 in one move. So that's why you keep the pawn on d7 and what you do is play g6 and then... Uh, and then, well... In some lines you go d6, but there are so many lines where you can go d5 right away. Yeah. Yeah. Those are really nice, nice lines, I think. Yeah? <laughs> some of my favorites. So d4. Now he takes, and we actually get into the same thing uh, with this move order: knight f6, and okay. Now we are into into what what we know. Bishop b3 here, and knight b3 right away. We castle, castle, and again, bishop to e6. 
f4, rook c8, and we are again in the same position where yeah. uh, in the previous game we saw f5. Yeah, we and it got it. tactical. It got tactical, and that's what we like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. But you can't force your opponent to play f5. No, you can't, unfortunately. But it looks so tempting that maybe... I would play f5, probably, as but not anymore, if I were yeah. playing. <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> Before this game, I would have played f5. Yeah. Well, he goes king h1 here, and this is usually how they prepare for uh, the attack on the king side, not going f5 too quickly, because as we saw, e5 is uh, always the square to use in those situations. And I was telling you this uh, in our last in our last week lesson that when the knight is on e5, it's like a huge this uh, huge important piece that defends everything on, yeah. the, on the king side. So, okay, now after king h1, he goes a6, he's preparing b5. This yeah. is one of your your plans here. Yeah. And white goes bishop f3, simply preparing uh, knight d5, because e4 was not defended before, so there was no knight d5. For example, if if we go b5 now, then knight d5, and we don't have a, such a good square for the knight on c6. No, when we and b6 looks a little... Loose, yeah? Yeah. Might be. We'd love to take on d5 and get the knight to c4, but it's not, um, it's not possible here. No. So we can wait. We don't have to hurry with this. Here he goes knight d7. Very nice uh, maneuvering here. f5 is no longer uh, possible. Yeah. With the bishop on f3. Everything. Because you just take and, and put the bishop in g6. Uh, here we can go bishop c4. Ah, yeah, okay. And get this diagonal and then go b5. Just so you don't open uh, your king too much. Taking on yeah. f5. Because you, you can't take on f5 twice, yeah? Yeah. You well we can show this. We can't do this because after bishop takes there is this and bishop. Th yeah, okay, it's hanging on yeah, c six, yep. The bishop on f5 was hanging, so this yeah. is this is not possible. But since the bishop went to uh, f three, we could go to c four now. Yeah. And this is how the game continued. <laughs> and bishop e two. Okay, the first moment where we stop, how could we uh continue here well, how can we improve our position what to do next i feel like one of the knights wants to go to, to e5. e5 i think you are right but which one <laughs> <laughs> um i mean this one opens up for the rook mm -hmm. so that seems like a good thing um and maybe the other knight maybe you want to go to c5 at some point i'm not sure I, f I feel like, I know you're not supposed to feel like. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay if you have. Uh, sometimes my you just intuition feel is that I should put the c6 knight on e5. Yeah. Uh, at least just to open up for the book, if nothing else. Yes, of course. Yeah, you are right. Knight e5. Also, yeah. because the other knight um, might be useful to defend f6. Uh, sometimes yeah. your opponent might go to e5. Maybe e5. Or... Or, yeah, it has more options. That's just for yeah. Sometimes they harass you like this with e7, so you want to have ideas with uh, bishop f6 or knight f6. Just be able to defend everything. Yeah. Um, but one thing I, I wanted to show you, and I forgot here since we started looking at f5, was uh, the idea of knight d7. Uh, because this knight d7 does have an idea, and if white plays something else than f5, we want to go b5. And since the knight is on d7, now we have the idea of, of going knight b6 and knight c4. And bring yeah. the, this one to, to c4, since we can do it via e5, we're going to do, this, uh, to do it this way. But now after f5, of course, everything opens. So let's go back where, where we were and knight e5. Okay, and this position is, uh, black is doing fine in this position. There's really nothing to fear, and um, there is almost no attack on the king's side. I would say no attack, but something might <laughs> might show up there, maybe some threats. Uh, he takes on g6, 
Okay, we take back. And now bishop g5. And what we were talking about before, that you have to be a bit careful with e7 because knight d5 is there. And this is one of uh, the points that white can attack uh, in this structure. So now we can go knight f6. It's important. That's why it was important to keep uh, the knight there. Oh. Now he goes uh, knight to d5. Okay, the point is that knight e4 is not a good idea, right? Knight e4? Yeah, we cannot um, take that pawn. No, because of e, e7, yeah. e7 would be hanging. There are two pieces attacking here, and we can't yeah. really do... Uh, well, take that pawn on e4. Uh, but what we can do, and is one of the things uh, black does many times, is take on d5. Take on d5. Now pawn takes, and now we can play on the queen side, queen c7. Prepare attacking on uh, on c2. We are threatening to take on e2 yeah. and win a pawn. Well, yeah, we have to be careful with e7, I was thinking, but I guess we could um, defend e7 first and then uh, take c2. There's always the in-between f6 that we can play and then take on take the pawn on, on c2. Yeah? Yeah, I th if, yeah, it's a little ugly to play f6, but if it's... Uh... I think, uh, yeah, I agree, but I think that we get uh, a lot of pawns there. I was yeah. wondering if we get b2 as well. But, okay, we can also wait, don't need to hurry like that. He plays c3 anyway, because that's a threat white has to be careful about. And now rook e8, just prepare Yeah. Uh, moving the queen. Being patient. Being patient and just uh, <laughs> take care of your weaknesses because the f7 one is uh, is defended by the knight. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Very nice knight on e5. So. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece. <laughs> you see, yeah. <laughs> one. Uh, okay, and one thing to another thing that you need to remember in this structure is that uh, the pawn on d5 can many times be a target. Yeah, especially when the when you have a piece in c4. That's why you always want to get one there, no? It's yeah. Not so it feels like an isolated pawn. It, on it does feel like that, yeah. Yeah. And the pawns on c3 and b2 they look really nice right now, but there are so many ideas about uh, that involve attacking the pawns that uh, and to open the bishop on g7, and you'll see that uh, you can weaken the structure on the queen side uh, really, really quickly. Okay. When you when you have everything under control on the king side, that's that's important. First, take care of your king, and then <laughs> move on to the attack. What should uh, White play for here? Uh, he took on c four. Yeah. Makes sense, no? Because we have to yeah. at some point uh, get rid of that. And now he takes with the queen. Simply because if I take with the knight, I might have to come back. Uh, to the yeah, the knight is looking great on e5. Just... You don't really want to move it. No? No. Queen c4. And now he goes queen d2. Okay. Next stop. And the next question, how should we continue with black here? This is, now it's, uh, now it's not tactical anymore. It's no? not tactical it's anymore. <laughs> <laughs> For well, the positional player, um, you, Sophie. You, so you said something about weakening the, the queen side. Uh, structure so maybe playing um, b5 but I'm not sure if we can really play b4 right away maybe do, do, do. well you also have to look at your opponent a little like bit this, eh? or playing something really slowly like this and this you could play for a5, a4, but you also have to look a bit at your opponent. Don't yeah. forget that you, you have <laughs> someone <laughs> there and who also wants to beat you. <laughs> they might also be tactical like you. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, 
So what does what does a white want to do? How could uh, they try and create counterplay here? Uh, they could maybe they want to double the rooks in the f file, playing something like this, this. Mm -hmm. Maybe this knight want to go here. Yeah. Playing the bishop here, see if uh, see if they can if make white can exchange the the black squared bishops. Yeah, and I think that after okay, I'm it's a long shot, but suppose the queen gets on h6, then rook f4 and rook h4. And yeah, okay, that be... looks also really. So the first yeah, thing to okay. do, you have to stabilize the position, make sure that you're not going to get mated. If you play yeah, too okay. slowly, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to fall under your own tactics. No. How to do that? I was thinking that if white were to play something like bishop h6, I could just move my bishop to h8. Yeah, you could do that. I, I guess you could do that. It's a bit uncomfortable though as well. No? Okay. Still, there could be ideas with queen g5. I don't know, rook f4, rook h4, just to scare you. <laughs> Not sure if yeah. it's getting anywhere, but... Maybe I could uh, take advantage of the <laughs> h file by playing something like like this. Well, f6, f6 is, and king f7 is something that you want to get, but not with the bishop on g7. Because no, then, uh, that's true. You it's also going said to be this before. Piece. Yeah, you didn't like that piece there. But the piece that's mating you here and gives you a lot of headaches is the queen, right? And ah, so we want to exchange the queen. We want to exchange the queens, yeah? Because okay, can we? Also like because, this? like queen d3, yeah, that's that's what he played. Queen d3. Okay. And now... That's the thing I never look for, queen exchanges. <laughs> because you're a tactical player. <laughs> yeah. But I, I see that it makes a lot of sense because his uh, king is safer than mine, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That too, and because your uh, advantage is more long term, let's say. Even when, when we are looking at plans, you are looking at uh, slow play on the queen side. You want to play uh, a5, a4, uh, try to ruin his structure. And when we look yeah. at ideas for white, it's all very immediate, it's all very dynamic. So yeah. you know that they want to play for tactics and you want to play for a positional game and uh, without the queens. It will be very difficult for your opponent to get counterplay. So queen d3 and here he goes rook d1. Because the pawn on d5, no? No way to avoid the trade of queens here. Queen d3 actually... No, that's it. true, yeah. Cannot go anywhere. So he goes rook d1 and first thing, queens off the board. <laughs> Let's remove the Done. danger. Yeah. Okay. Now we can think about our our queen side. Now step two, uh, how do we want to place our pieces in this position? Now where is the counterplay for him? Because he will still try to do something. Hmm? Yeah, I mm, I was thinking about, I mean, f7 could mm. be a weakness. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, because he doesn't have any open, He we have the c file, he doesn't, so uh probably something in the f file and the e file or just yeah playing more in the on the king side um i was thinking about so it makes sense for the knight to be an e5 so that it's protecting f7 but then on the other hand it's blocking for the for the bishop mm -hmm. so maybe you can find a better <laughs> a maybe better the knight one. should be here uh -huh. And what do we do with the bishop on it and the pawn then on f7? The bishop goes to e5. Yes. And we play f6. Great. That's everything you have to do in this position. Okay. And your king is perfectly safe afterwards and there is no more counterplay for white on the king's side. Because you also keep uh, e7 under control if you have a piece on e5, no? There is nothing yeah, to, to worry there. So nice e4. Yeah. Okay, we have to calculate. Rook f2, and now we are kind of uh, 
in a moment where we're like, oh my God, F7 is hanging. What am I going to do? <laughs> so what are we going well, to do? Because we could win some pawns too, if, if we wanted them. But um, careful with his counterplay, no? If, uh, if you allow yeah, no. them to take on F7. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through all the options here. Let's you can't play this because of this. Yeah. That's not working. And if we play f6, it's uh, it's taking care of the threat, but it's locking in our bishop. So that doesn't look too good either, mm -hmm. I think. Unless you could then play f5 afterwards, or just then you could maybe just play f5 one move. f5 is another really option. Yeah, do you really want to play f5? No. no. <laughs> I don't think so. Why not? <laughs> Why doesn't so. Sophie want to play f5? Who? <laughs> Maybe we Why can I don't want to play f5? Yes. I think... Um, I think d e7 is going to be really weak. No, not if I put my bishop here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maybe I want to play f5 is the best so far, but I'm, oh, I'm not going to play that move. <laughs> um, I could play the knight back, but then it's sort of like Why did a dorish, a dorish uh, kind of. A, uh, uh. Well, my idea was that if you go f5, you might allow ideas with g4. Yeah, and yeah, maybe F7. also. That, yeah. Maybe not right um, away, but they are there. No? It's something to. Then I don't know how to defend f7. Then I should well, play the knight back. But if I play the knight back, then 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 I can't put my bishop there. Yeah. So the only move that uh, that's left for you to look at is bishop e5, <laughs> and see if uh, your okay, opponent yeah. can actually take. Uh, don't just believe so your opponent. So if we play bishop e5 and he captures, then we're going to capture these pawns down here. Keep looking. What what's happening after Bishop e5, Rook takes f7? Let's see who can help us. Who can help Sophie here? Yeah, uh, I would like to get City 95. So. Please <laughs> some help. The anchovies. Come on, give help uh, Sophie uh, some help here. What happens if White takes on f7? Do I want to exchange now? Maybe I want to exchange the rooks. Oops. Like this Can one? you hold on? There we go. Like this, yeah. Like this. 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 And this. <laughs> Bring me back but to then practical it's, Sophie. It's White's turn and I haven't really but White can't defend this pawn. Yeah, then we might go something like this. Mm. And then I'm probably just worse. So no. <laughs> okay, something else. Bring, bring, e5. Back the, bring back the tactical Sophie. Yeah, where, where, where is she? Okay, it's tactical. So something this, this, and then something tactical. <laughs> I put the... I put the I go back with my bishop. Yes, you go bishop f6 and the rook is trapped. So it, that's sort I, of counterintuitive, but it's it makes a lot of sense because the rook on f7 has no way out. And what I want to no. what I want to tell you here, what I wanted to show is that uh, even if you are playing such a positional game here, you're actually playing for a better structure on the queen side. Never forget about the tactics. No, uh, always they're always there. Uh, let's see how that works. If bishop e5, he didn't take on f7, but the, let's see uh, the line. Bishop f6. Game over, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, the books are really... This is a, an exchange up. Oh, well, for a pawn, but uh, it's not really that, an Im that such an important pawn in this position. Let's not forget b2 is hanging. So yeah. there's 
well if any there's very little compensation here and we are happy to get this position with black and now we can probably play something like rook f8 because yeah, we will put in a uh, back bank and yes the exchanges yeah. are, are in our favor here yeah so let's see how the game continued after bishop e5 he went h3 but now i guess we want to play f6 we want to play f6 so that's yeah. uh, that's exactly what we wanted this is our dream position here bishop c1 and now it's time to find a plan to uh well break the queen side try to create some mm, targets there how to continue I'm not sure if the oh maybe maybe I just want to put this pawn white down to a three and that, then c three is that's of course yeah that's of course one of the ideas um, yeah. see if it uh, if it works right away or well it does take a few moves to play but if you go move, move by move uh, a five have to see if white can. Uh, do anything well i guess not i was thinking about a4 but then yeah i was looking at it as well it's yeah maybe then maybe the the knight can go here and knight b6 yeah wins a pawn yeah uh, i guess that's that also works so you could actually yeah. go a5 here as well no? yeah we could go the other like is yeah the other one is b5, of course, uh, which is yeah. the one, <laughs> is actually the one he played. Uh, he played b5 and a5, um, but you could play a5 uh, right away since a4. They usually go b5 to stop a4. No, that's the idea. But here, yeah. as you pointed out, a5, a4, this is wrong because we have ib6. Well, he will take yeah. on a5, but uh, we do get, he takes here. Yeah. Maybe we should even just take the center pawn then. Yeah, we can take oh, but on he's off, uh, yeah. this is something. It gets complicated, no? It's like so Yeah, it gets complicated. And it's really unnecessary. Too complicated. <laughs> really unnecessary. Yeah, I guess B5 is more, makes more sense. Just to uh, keep the control over the position and not get into any complicated things. And again, we were discussing about this. Now you give a pawn, you take another one, and you just actually want to take d5 and forget about everything else. You don't really want to give him anything back, no. <laughs> if you can. So I guess b5 is the safe uh, safe way to go. Of course, you could still go a5 and not go knight b6 if you want, but that's going to be mm, maybe a bit longer. Um, I was thinking that after a5 and a4, we could play for an idea like b5, which should also be quite strong. Prepare like putting the rook and b8? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Then b5, and we get the rook on b5, attack d5, attack b2. And this should also be good for black. Mm. The other idea with b5 is also strong, makes, makes a lot of sense too. He goes rook d1, and here a5 uh, is perfectly fine, but black first goes king f7, just to have everything <laughs> defended there. Maybe have rook h8, you were, you were uh, thinking about that idea at some point. Mm. Mm. No, he goes g4, there is actually not no threat there, so a5. Now I think, I mean, after g4, I think rook h h8 looks also good but i think he can simply yeah. defend and yeah. what you are going to do in the end is a5 and maybe the yeah. pawn on h3 is something you could uh, use later maybe not yeah the king on h1 might be worse place it's a bit further from the center maybe in the end game it's better to have it there if uh, if rook h8 mm. doesn't bring you anything immediate i think that's why he goes uh, like this first he goes rook d3 and now e4, exactly the plan. Now, what happens if knight d4? How do you want to, how would you continue after knight d4? Let me play it on the board. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> something tactical going on, I think. Uh, if I play B4, maybe, just a moment. There's something about White's back rank being, being not too well protected. I'm just trying to find out how to So I guess, I mean, if you took the knight, mm -hmm. he cannot take back with the pawn. Maybe he can take back with the pawn. My idea was then to play the knight to e5, threatening the rook, but then maybe the rook can go back or even to c3. Um... Yeah, but in that position, if he takes with the pawn, I think that's a very strong, good position for you. You don't have to go to e5. Maybe you can find a better idea. Yeah, but if he takes with the rook... Yeah, taking with the rook. Because uh, you had knight b6 there. Yeah. In that position. If pawn takes, knight b6, attack two pieces. So yeah, that's takes. true. Then I'm also attacking b5. Mm -hmm. But if he takes with the rook, yeah. then I'm not sure what to do. Hmm. So then maybe I should play b4 first. Okay, but one of uh, White's ideas after knight d4 is what? Which one? What would he like to... Putting the knight here? e6, c6 looks also very good. Yeah, c6 is probably better, yeah. Just to close your rook and threaten something on e5. I don't know if I'm threatening anything. So you you want me to take on? <laughs> so you want D4. to you want to take on d4? <laughs> you want to take on d4? Actually, yes. Um, yeah, because this yeah, knight is. You just have to figure out what happens after rook takes. Well, but uh, you can. Uh, well, also... Maybe I can play. This. Yeah. No, what idea maybe. do you have? <laughs> then I could play b4. Yeah. Then. And if he takes. I can, oh, but then I'm no longer, then d5 is no longer unprotected. Mm -hmm. That's mm. true. Well, but uh, the decision of taking on d4, you should take uh, based on the fact that that knight is a source of counterplay and he could, uh, if knight c6, yeah. you're not going to be very comfortable in this position. You want the c5. No. So we're just going to remove this knight since pawn takes okay. was not possible. Rook takes. Okay, and now you can think about uh, your ideas here. The pawn on d5, let's not forget about it. So we could go rook c5, maybe. Yeah. Try to play knight b6. And the other idea that you have is a3. Okay. And get the one on c3. So you play this yeah, position. Yeah, that makes sense. It's very comfortable for, for black also. The knight is better than the bishop uh, here. Has good outposts in the position. So, well, actually here white went for knight d2. Okay, and now what do we do? We... <laughs> I just keep wanting to play B4, but right now it's it's probably What's not. Wrong? Why not? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it is okay. Calculate. See if it's okay. Taking. Taking. This pawn is hanging. Which one? Uh, then the B2. B2 pawn is hanging. Yeah. That but is my cool. knight is also hanging. No, your knight is not hanging, no? Uh... No, 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 that's true. We exchanged the knight. Knight.
-hmm. Maybe this move. I mean, I feel like it's it's one of that you have to play for either B4 or uh, or A3. But I really, I really have a hard time figuring out what makes more sense. Well, your first instinct of going B4 is right. Okay. Here we do want to go B4 because of the bishop on C1 that you immediately spotted. So B4, the only question is what, is, what happens if he takes, right? Yeah. So let's find uh, what happens here. I just couldn't find any really... Um, now, of course, you can't move the... Here. Yeah. <laughs> so that he cannot play book f1. Mm -hmm. Yes, knight e3 is very strong in this position. Yeah. Very nice find, Sophie. Thank you. <laughs> and now you take yeah. and Yeah? Yeah, and then there are tactics. <laughs> yes. No, okay, they're not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are tactics. Where are the tactics? Sorry. Ah, bishop d4. Well, there, yes. it, well if you moved, if he were to like move the, the king, then bishop e4. Yes. But no, you can just put something in between. Yeah, bishop But then e4. still, I yeah. can capture here, okay, like this. Okay. Other tactics. No, uh, no, no other tactics, but this position is very good for you. You could even play rook c8 here. Yeah. And the thing is that you want to take b2, you want to play rook c2 uh, with tactics. <laughs> rook h2. <Yeah. laughs> rook h2 ideas, no? Um, but mainly picking up all the pawns on, on the second rank. So yeah. this is very, very good for black. So b4 works, right? White yeah. uh, cannot take. He played knight e4 in the game, but now we uh, did get what we wanted, a pawn to attack. Mm. The thing is that if he takes with the knight, now there will be problems with the pawn on d5. So we could take once more here, and if he insists uh, and takes with the rook, then knight b6. And what's going to happen to the pawn on d5 is going to be lost uh, yeah. in a second. So he must take with the B pawn, and then we uh, we finally have something to do. We also have the B file, and that's why first thing to do, take, occupy the open file. Rook B8, we want Rook B1. He goes King G2, and Rook B1, yeah? Yeah. This makes a lot of sense. He goes Knight D2 here, uh, which, well, trying to get some ah okay okay because if we take he wants to take with the bishop uh, black took on c1 take yes. here and he took on c3 yeah that's a pawn so now we're up a pawn we are up a pawn now yeah yes we do have the a pawn that white was trying to get counterplay against uh, but you'll see that well our pieces are so active usually uh, that's enough so uh, here we go Maybe like this. rook b8. Yeah. And when I take on a4? Maybe? No. Need to be careful about it. I can take on a4, yeah? Yeah. I was thinking something like this, maybe? No, not this. Uh, this, perhaps? Bishop e5, maybe that could work and keep the knight out of play. And you want to play rook b1, I guess? Yeah, let's see if I can do some. Made him. I think that's Made a good him. idea and you could play for that too. Yeah. That's also a possibility. In the game, he kept it simple and he played a3. But your idea yeah. is actually very strong as well. Okay. So a3 he played. And now rook f1. Okay, here he just uh, repeated a couple of times and takes on f1. The bishop takes and bishop b2 is how he wanted to hold on to the pawn. Knight c4, okay, looks like we are going to lose the pawn. What are we going to do?
Maybe playing knight a8, like at uh, rook a8. And what and does then rook, yeah? If he captures, then, and get behind the pawn, then I play here. Yeah, uh, in that case, you do have that, but I'm not, I don't have to take. And my idea was that I could go rook b3 in that position instead. On rook a8, what about rook b3? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, dynamic ideas, as you were looking for b before. Maybe rook c8. And on knight a3. I just forgot that <laughs> the knight is then covering c2. But No, I think you have to believe more in your instinct and in your moves. <laughs> and just uh, keep looking for, for things. Yeah. <sighs> Here, maybe. The problem after knight a3 is that the knight is really badly placed on a3. Yeah, it is actually. It doesn't really have a way to a way out. It, it has only one way out via b5. I guess you could go rook a8 because you're kind of getting your pawn back immediately. But then if you allow uh, these three versus four, maybe the drawing chances are bigger for white yeah so the one pawn that you really want to get here is this one so you can get uh, the mass of pawns have all the pawns connected and be able to advance them and after rook c8 knight a3 you can win it by force here rook c5 just a quiet move like that <laughs> yeah keep the knight from coming out and you simply want to take the knight and then take on d5 and that's much easier to win that and i shouldn't game. worry about the a pawn in no, that position why it's a pawn because your pawns will be faster okay and you will keep the rook behind the pawn you will see because white will try something with a4 okay. Okay. but you have the the full pawns there you go f5 after this one's gone you go f5 e5 and uh, you have so many threads there. Mm, let's okay. see how this how this was played. Rook d5. Rook a8, and the first thing he does is rook b5 to get some well, be able to get behind the pawn if necessary, uh, be able to attack the pawns on the king side perhaps also. He goes rook, uh, king d3 and f5. Need to yeah. put, put these ones in motion takes here takes with the g pawn because the h pawn can be easily stopped with the king for example and we yeah. will be uh, we want to advance the rest of the pawns king c4 okay now you can play uh, rook b2 as well there's nothing wrong with that he gives a check on c5 to force the king it either uh, it either bless you <laughs> thank you <laughs> Uh, the king must either go to b4 and um, allow black to go f4 without anybody stopping him, or he goes to d3 and the king is a bit further from the a pawn. Yeah, and maybe, yeah. He goes to d3, I think. that's uh, yeah. That feels more comfortable. And now rook c1. Here and now you also have a uh, counterplay against this pawn. So if a5, you're going to take the pawn. And just get behind. Yeah, and go f four. Yeah. 
not sure what uh, where white should go king d2 king king d2 yeah because d4 i'm going um he might get mated there <laughs> with e5 yeah so suppose here and i guess rook a3 we can play to make sure that the pawn is stopped and then go for uh f4 and so on e5 I could also get my king to d5 first and then push the pawns. Yeah, I can see now that it's winning for the black also because if I get now, right? the black pawns uh, far enough up the board, then I could even just, you know, sacrifice the book on the pawn and then if the three pawns are like up here, they, they might just mm -hmm. be worth a lot more than the book. That's true. I uh, probably not necessary to no. sacrifice the rook because it looks like you are in time. You just have to yeah. uh, get the king into a good square. Well, here he played rook h8 and king g7. And now the rook has to go somewhere. It went to h4, uh, but then the pawn is not easy to advance. So that's good for us. And f4. Too fast. Yeah. Rook h5, king g6, and rook a1. Now, if king b5, we are going to go e4. Very strong, fast pawns. Yeah. He went to d5, but then we get this pawn, and we keep uh, the other two. Also, the king is cut, the white king. Oh, he's not going to be able to help with no. um, with the pawns. Oh, he gave a check here. Check. And now after rook g8, he wants to go to h4. Now if rook g4, for example, we can simply take the pawn on h3. Let's see the line. Take here. He can take on f4, but now... Uh, suppose we go king g3 and we advance the pawn without a king to help stop the pawn this is going to be winning uh, really easily yeah? this position if yeah i think so yeah rook f5 e3 because as as, uh, as soon as white goes behind mm -hmm. you could probably put your king here and, and your rook here yeah that's something that's, like yeah, that yeah of course. Yeah, yeah, and if checks, you just cover with the rook, of course. Yeah. So, well, here he played king e5. He's hoping for some mating threats. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the last thing to, to try for here. <laughs> like if f, uh, f3, maybe king f4 and uh, something there. Probably. Yeah. But it's unnecessary to go f3 and allow the king to advance. So e3, yeah. much simpler. Yeah, better. Yeah, to keep the king cut, defend the pawns, and, well, keep advancing. So I'd resign here. Just yeah. no more hopes for, for him. Okay, uh, good job today. Also a good game, just a, a little a little more uh, positional. This one, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, in the Accelerated Dragon, uh, there are not so many uh, attacks. There are some ideas with... Like, for example, this rook c3, but it's mainly <laughs> positional. Mainly these sorts of games you need to play for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like the square c4 and so on. Yeah. Knight c4, you saw the idea of putting a bishop on e5 and um, pawns to f6, d6. This is also really typical. Um, the other thing that we saw was that whenever they push f5, they give you the square e5, which is really important for the knight. And of course, yes. the big sacrifice on c3, which I hope you can use. <laughs> if you I really do, hope please so send me the game. <laughs> I really hope so too. Maybe in some blitz games, if not uh, in yeah. an over the board game. Yeah. Feels more probable, probable to get it in a blitz game. <laughs> yeah, then uh, that would be nice. Maybe I can even play, play it against uh, my boyfriend who. Um, who was but, the one who won the game over me? Yeah, I remember. I, yeah. But are you sure he yeah. didn't watch this? 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure because I can see that he left his computer here, and I'm pretty sure that he. Oh, great! Right. So <laughs> challenge him now. <laughs> yeah, I will do that. Okay. Well, good uh, good work today, Sophie. Uh, thank you. Very good lesson. You thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, I'll talk to you soon then. Thank yes. you to everybody well, watching us. Uh, well, talk to you probably next week. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. I'm pretty sure I'm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'll be available. Not going on holiday yet, huh? <laughs> no, only in Denmark and still with my computer. Mm. So I would really uh, like to have another lesson. Yeah, sure. We can set up that. Set that up. Great. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.